I'm so pleased just to say welcome. Welcome all back to our first in-person concert since Valentine's Day 2020. So how about that? <laughs> Thank you all for coming out. I know you didn't come here to hear me speak. There's uh, uh, some, some people and organizations that I would like to thank. And uh, starting with Maurice and Linda Binkow, Dr. Herschel and Mrs. Dorothy Sandberg, Nancy Salden, Elaine Weingarten, Ken and Penny Fisher, and I'd also like to thank our entire board, which is an all-volunteer board. There's only seven of us right now, and uh, it's a real privilege to work with them. Their hard work, passion, and organizational skills uh, made this possible today. Uh, along with some individuals, there's also organizations I'd like to thank. Uh, Michigan Arts and Culture Council, the Anton Arts Center, our newest corporate sponsor, Tito's Homemade Vodka, Tableau Software, Our Magazine, and WRCJ Radio. Now, the most important people that I want to thank today are sitting in the audience, and that's William Bolcom and Joan Morris. You know, Bill Bolcom chose 50 years ago to make his home the state of Michigan. And, uh, and he also chose as his life partner, uh, world-renowned cabaret singer, Joan Morris, who is here today as well. <laughs> On today's program, what we're going to hear is a collection of works that represent the lifelong contribution of William Bolcom. You'll see and hear a collection of world-class musicians to honor our guest of honor and to perform for all of us. I want to give at this time a special thanks to Sonia Lee. Sonia Lee is a violinist, teacher, composer, arranger. She's been our partner on this concert from the beginning and has done more work than anybody knows to get us to where we are today. So thank you, Sonia. And now I'd like to introduce Cecilia, Cecilia Sharp. She's today's host. Cecilia is a graduate of Wayne State University and has been teaching and advocating for youth in the arts for over 10 years. In addition to her role as an educator and advocate for youth in the arts, Ms. Sharp serves as a guest host at WRCJ 90.9 FM produces the In Concert with the Wu Family Academy Showcase program, as well as Live with C Sharp program. You'd be interested to know that Sonia Lee's children had Cecilia as their first teacher some years ago. For the last two years, Cecilia has hosted our Pro Musica Live online series of concerts. She was an important part of keeping our mission alive when we could not present in person and these broadcasts reached thousands of people, existing Pro, K Pro Musica members, as well as new friends and future members. So, at this time, it is my great pleasure to introduce Cecilia Sharp. Thank you. Hi, how are you guys? From what I can see, you guys are looking real good out there, and so glad to be here in person and to be able to be in this amazing venue. It feels so good to be on the stage and, and just see all of you out there. And I know the lights are you know, down, but I know you're there. I'm Cecilia Sharp, host on 90.9 WRCJ, host of Live with C Sharp and the proud host of the Pro Musica concerts. I am so thankful to Pro Musica for approaching me with this opportunity to host during a time when it was quite a bit dark, but to be able to share my love for music and talking with people and extending my skills in a different way. And trust me, it definitely challenged me. So I'm grateful for that challenge as well and so glad to be here on the stage. And of course, I have to thank all of you for coming and thank you so much for supporting us during that virtual time um, and enjoying all of those concerts. So give yourselves a big round of applause as well. 
You're worth more than that. There you go. All right. Now, loosen up just a little bit. Just wiggle those shoulders just a little bit. Yeah, it's going to be a good concert. You can clap for it. You can cheer. Show your love for it. That's what we're here uh, to do and to pay tribute to an awesome man, William Bolcom. Now, I don't know what you guys were doing when you were 11 year years old, okay? I mean, maybe you might have been playing jacks, maybe you were doing hopscotch, maybe you were like me and you were hula hooping and playing, skipping and trying to do science fair projects in the front yard and watching WWE or WWF matches. That, that was what I was doing. And I had just started cello only two years uh, ago when I was nine years old. And that's what most kids do. At 11, William Bochum was already composing. Yeah. Uh, William Bochum studied with George Frederick McKay, Darius Mio, and he also attended the Paris Conservatory. He is that person. We always talk about composers and famous people who, oh, they studied and they were in the circles of the likes of all these people. He is that person, a living legend right here in front of us that has done all of that. He has composed four operas, nine symphonies, 12 string, uh, string quartets, four volumes of preludes for, gospel preludes for organ, as well as four collections of cabaret songs, and that's just scratching the surface. He's won a Pulitzer Prize Award. He's also won the Detroit Music Award, and of course, a Grammy. <sighs> and the list goes on. We are definitely here to honor him today, and we have some incredible musicians that are going to do that. Leading the way, we have Mark andre Hamelin uh, paired with Sonia Lee. They have worked so incredibly hard, as well as Caitlin Lynch, Jeremy Crosmer, Gene Schneider, John Etzel, and Lisa Rasciatori. They are going to put on a dynamic show for you today, performing the work of William Bochum, paying tribute to him. And to kick off the show, uh, we're going to start with Waitin' from his opera. So you have a, quite a mix on this lineup in the first half. Sit back, get ready, and we're going to start the show off with Waitin'. Thanks, guys. Thank you. I'm really honored to begin this program with Waitin', which is from uh, Bill's Cabaret Songs. Enjoy.
To the scope in the oats, to 
Are you guys enjoying the concert thus far? Yes, how about another round for all of the musicians on the stage? All right, well, stick around. We have a brief 15 minute intermission and there's plenty more where that came from. We'll be right back. Tito was already doing it on his own before we put a name on Love Tito's. He used to give it away as gifts and to events, which of course included charitable events. The culture that he has started, and it all starts with Tito himself and rolls downhill. You know what, if we can go and you know, take our company and support all these people that are finding meaning and purpose in their lives by doing nice things for other people that they don't even know, that makes me happy, it makes all my employees happy, then I look at it like maybe we can make a little ripple in the world, you know? Most businesses really use organizations to allow them to be known, and we kind of flip-flop that. We're able to use our amazing culture around us to give them support and make people more aware of what they do. And I think that's the end goal, is to do something that has meaning and purpose. We're here in this company to make the world a better place, and we like to think we're doing it through Tito's Handmade Vodka. Welcome back, welcome back everyone. Had a chance to catch a breath and perhaps mingle with the people around you and talk about the concert. And uh, we want to do something a, a little different. And most of the time you don't have this opportunity to have a talk back after the intermission, you go right into the music. But we found that during the virtual time, I was having conversations with musicians in between the pieces. And we wanted to bring just a little bit of that to the stage for this live concert. So I have with me Mrs. Sonia Lee, welcome. Thank you so much, Cecilia, and thank you so much to all our patrons here, um, especially for this William Volcom tribute. Um, special thanks to William Volcom and Joan Morris, whom we actually had a wonderful opportunity with Lumino, our trio, to go to his house and play for him some rags um, after the vaccinations and CDC uh, boosters were all met. That is so incredible. Let's talk a little bit about the first half of the concert. What were some of the highlights for you in the first half of the concert? I would say the um, incredible roster of artistry, the magnitude of artistry of our Caitlin Lynch, who recently just uh, performed uh, this work with Jean Schneider, and also um, just her grace and her poise, but also her incredible ability to transcend uh, the music of Bolcom. Uh, we're grateful that she was able to be here um, with Jean Schneider. They actually have a new CD, Sweet Dreams, which um, is available online. But uh, I also purchased one myself. And uh, uh, the first half really focused on um, the brilliance of our composer, William Bolcom, and especially being able to to perform with Mark Andre Hamelin. Wasn't he incredible? 
All of you were absolutely incredible, and I definitely agree that it was so amazing that Caitlin was able to step in. She was absolutely dynamic on, on the stage, for sure. So, as we pay tribute to Mr. Bolcom, yes, yes, let's talk about the importance of the work of Mr. William Bolcom. We know we talked about four operas, nine symphonies, 12 string quartets. He has a whole collection of gospel organ preludes, as well as the cabaret songbook, a, a huge collection of that. It's such a wide variety, but can you talk about the importance of his work and contributions? Yes, um, it was during our Lumino uh, meeting with Joan Morris and William Bulcom that he specifically pointed out that he felt he owed his Pulitzer Prize to Mark Andre Hamelin. And uh, we are so grateful that he was available during uh, this Pro Musica Detroit, and we also thank the Detroit uh, Film Theater, Larry, and all of our board members here. Uh, but what was really poignant was his ability to point out that he single-handedly felt that he owed his Pulitzer Prize to Mark Andre Hamelin. Uh, so that is why we are here. And his second uh, fantasy sonata, which is about 21 minutes, um, and there's going to be such a wonderful uh, performance now after the short intermission of having him premiere the world premiere of this work. Yes, you guys are in such in for such a treat. There's the world premiere. I don't know if you caught that. I know you're listening, but catch it one more time. There's the world premiere of the Second Fantasy Sonata today on this stage here at the Detroit Film Theater. That is something to clap for. <laughs> So before we talk a little bit more about the second half of the concert, yes. we are here because of Pro Musica Detroit. They have been putting on these concerts for many, many years. And actually, 20 years ago, yeah, 20 years ago, here at the DIA, Mr. Volcom allowed uh, Pro Musica to pr do the Michigan premiere of his cabaret works, and now we're coming back full circle 20 years later, playing, paying tribute. Can you talk about the importance of organizations like Pro Musica and keeping um, live music going and people supporting live music? Yes, that is an excellent question. Pro Musica to us here in Metro Detroit really represents the culmination of um, a triumvirate, if you will, of audience, um, composers, and artists, musicians coming together and really, really relinquishing their gifts. And Pro Musica allows that to happen even during the COVID pandemic. They were able to source um, artists of such high caliber, uh, many colleagues, including um, those that you're hearing on this stage tonight um, and today. So I'm really, really grateful for Pro Musica, not only for their investment, but their time and their commitment and highest standard of musical excellence. How about a round of applause for Pro Musica? I must definitely say that I am also grateful for that opportunity once again to be able to serve as the, the virtual host or the host of the virtual concerts during that time and just to bring people light in such a dark time and give artists an opportunity to showcase their talents and just serve the world in a, in a different type of way. So as we wrap this conversation up, I know you have to get backstage and we want to, to make sure we give all the time and room for this second half. What can we expect in this second half with the world premiere and uh, the complete rags? I would say that you have the culmination of the highest caliber of composition and one of the finest world-class pianists on today's world stage. You've already heard Caitlin Lynch, Jean Schneider, my colleague Jeremy Crosmer, who is unfortunately not here. He had to run to the DSO, uh, as well as our son. But we also are just so grateful for this incredible opportunity to showcase um, the world premiere of the Second Fantasy Sonata, and also, most importantly, the upcoming CD by Hyperion, which will be released on June 3rd of Bolcom Rags by Mark Andre Hamelin. So without further ado, let us begin the second half. 
Here we are. We have the second fantasy sonata world premiere.
Ladies and gentlemen, once again, we have Sonya Lee. Thank you so much. This we has are been so such... grateful to have you. You've been supporting us from the very start of our virtual concert series and keeping everything going. Thank you so much for your commitment to Pro Musica for all the hard work that you have put in to make this happen and so many of the other concerts that we have been able to enjoy. And, you know, it's always a treat to be able to talk with you and catch up and, and have fun. Yes, I would agree. And I wanted to say a heartfelt note of gratitude to William Balcom and Joan Morris, but especially Pro Musica and our um, esteemed world-class pianist, Mark Andre Hamelin, and all the Pro Musica artists of today um, and our concert for Balcom's tribute. Um, can I just see my colleagues stand, if you're still here? Uh, Dr. John Etzel, who just received his doctorate from U of M, and also Dr. Lisa Recitori, our clarinetist, and Jeremy, who is at the Detroit Symphony Orchestra performing cello with the orchestra at Orchestra Hall. Um, I also wanted to reach out and say a special word of gratitude, a note of gratitude to my family, uh, Michael Lee and my mother-in-law, Sue Lee, and Trinity and William. We're just really grateful to not only be in this arena for the Detroit Film Theater, sponsored by ProMusica and all our sponsors, um, but just to reflect upon the amazing music of William Bolcom. And sure enough, he is here with us right now, uh, making an appearance. We are so very, very grateful. We have a special treat for you right now. So, Sonia, should we make way? I believe so. Well, let's go. Yes, let's have a round of applause for William Bulcom and Joan Morris. Say anything? Uh, I have uh, done this song just as a joke from my wife, and she said I'll never play it. You know, how many thousands of times have you done it ever since? Oh my gosh! I, I said I'll never do it. It's too silly. Um, yeah, we've done it as an encore for oh my God, 45 years. <laughs> um, lime jello, marshmallow, cottage cheese, surprise. This is the first performance we've done. Well, actually, we did a couple little cabarets in our home since March 2020. Um, so I was interested in the piano sonata. It sounded kind of like some of the conversations we had during that time. You know, you, you try to keep things positive. You try to keep your hope. Well, listen, here we are. Let's survive. Let's live to tell the tale. Oops. Ladies, the minutes will soon be read today. The garden club and weaving class, I'm sure, have much to say. But next week is our culture night, our biggest, best event. And I've just made a dish for it. You'll all find heaven set. It's my live jello marshmallow cottage cheese surprise with slices of pimento. You won't believe your eyes. All topped with a pineapple ring and a dash of mayonnaise. My vanilla wafers round the edge will win your highest praise. And Mrs. Jones is making scones that are filled with peanut mousse to be followed by a chicken mold that's laid in the shape of a goose. For ladies who must watch those pounds, we found a special dish. Strawberry ice enshrined in rice with bits of tuna fish and my lime jello marshmallow cottage cheese surprise. Truly a creation that description defies will go so well with Mrs. Bell's creation of the week. Shrimp salad topped with chocolate sauce and garnished with a leek. And Mrs. Perkins walnut loaf that's crowned with melted cheese. Was such a hit last culture night, we ask no seconds, please. Now you must try her hot dog pie with candied mushroom slices. Those ladies who resigned last year, they just don't know what nice is. And my lime jello marshmallow cottage cheese surprise. 
I did not steal that recipe. It's lies, I tell you, lies. I'll grant a ward a picture hat and a salmon sequin gown for any girl who tries each dish and keeps her whole lunch down. I'm sure you all are waiting for the biggest news, dessert. We thought of things in molds and rings your diet to subvert. You must try a chocolate layer cake on a peanut brittle base with slices of bananas that make a funny face. Around the edges, peppermints just swimming in peach custard with lovely little curlicues of lovely yellow mustard. <laughs> All this is too much for you, permit me to advise. More lime jello, marshmallow, cottage cheese, surprise. I've made heaps. As, as one of my mentors said to me one time, Joan, you're not a ham. Hams can be cured. <laughs> um, oh, oh, this way, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for that. Lime Jello, Marshmallow, Cottage Cheese Surprise. I hope you all enjoyed your surprise. Thank you so much, Mr. Bochum. Come back out. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So happy to... Thank you, dear people. Thank you. Once again, Joan Morris and Mr. William Bochum. What a treat. Oh, I have to thank them and, and definitely thank you to both of you. I had the opportunity to sit down and speak with them earlier and I really didn't want to ask any questions because I was soaking up so much information from them. And I said, what's an interview? Just let the interview go out the window. But thank you so much to Mr. Bolcom and Ms. Morris for all of their contributions. Thank you for blurring those lines, erasing those lines of serious and, and artsy music and letting everyone know that it's our music, it's everybody's music, and everyone should enjoy all of the music, and I definitely hope that you did today. I'd like to thank all of you for showing up on this Sunday. What a great way to enjoy your Sunday here at the Detroit Film Theater with this concert from Pro Musica Detroit. Thank you to all of the musicians for everything that you showcase, for putting your heart and soul right here out on the stage and sharing it with this awesome audience. Thank you to all of the musicians. Thank you to the DIA staff. <laughs> Without you, this would not be possible. Thank you, Rudy Lauerman, Larry Baranski, and Salvador Salar Pons, the DIA director. Thank you to all of the stage techs, the sound engineers, the people who actually make this sound possible. Without you guys, this would not be happening. So thank you to all of you. We have upcoming concerts in our 2022 season for Pro Musica Detroit, and they will be in, in person. We definitely encourage you to attend, and they will probably also be available online. We have Fei Fei and Acropolis all coming up in the 2022 season, offered both in person and online. And if you would like to get more information please visit promusicadetroit.com. I'm Cecilia Sharp from 90.9 WRCJ, proud to be your host. Thank you once again for coming, and please enjoy your Sunday afternoon. Mm -hmm.